question, make it a comment, or anything like that. It's a little bit of a delay, because I'm watching myself here on this screen. So it's a bit of a delay, so just give me a second, and then I can answer you. I have my questions that people have written in. I got my bottle of wine, because tonight I don't have to make a cake, clean up or anything. So I'm definitely going to let loose. And I advise you, if you are over the age of 21 or whatever country you're in and you're legal to drink, to do so. Because Thursdays for me are my Fridays. Get myself all situated. Alright, so I gotta do several things. I gotta make sure I'm answering your questions, right? That's one. Two, I gotta make sure I'm staying on time, right? So you guys don't cut off on me. So, uh, and I gotta make sure I don't get too twisted while I'm answering these questions. Okay, so let's first start off by saying, hey, what's up? Welcome to Market. Yes, my badass out of art. I'm your girl, Jelena, and you have made it through the month because this is the fourth Friday. Nope. The fourth Thursday, if you're watching this live, of the month, which means it's a fix it Friday, not a fake it with me. I come on every Thursday night at 8 o'clock when I make it on time, Eastern time, and we do a fake it with me where I come on and hopefully you're not looking to figure out how to bake from scratch because that's not what I'm teaching. I'm teaching you how to bake on a dime and bake from not scratch, the opposite of that. Know what I mean? And then with the fix it Fridays, which we do live every fourth Thursday of the month, is me trying to do something to fix a problem that someone asked me for help about, or this Fix It Friday is all about answering your questions, and maybe we can have like an open conversation. So don't be afraid to go right ahead and be like, hey, I got a question, or jump right in, and if you feel like your answer may be better than my answer, listen, we're all here to learn from each other, and it's better to communicate one-on-one, -on -one, and you know what I'm saying? and not thinking, because my way ain't the right way or the highway, it's just an opinion, something that works better for me, and maybe there's something out there that works better for you, so share it with the entire class. If you feel like you're gonna miss any one of these moments tonight, don't worry, you're gonna see this posted on my YouTube channel tomorrow. I always post a replay, so that way you guys can uh, watch it forever and ever and ever. Right, all right, so I'm gonna check to see if I missed anything. Miss anything? No. Everybody's just chiming in. Oh my God! Hello, everybody. Hi. How you doing? Can I get some hellos? Can I get some highs? Can I get some what's up? I do this thing um, because we don't have an ice box, you know, like fancy schmancy people do, but like a little fancy refrigerator that makes ice for you. And I don't like those like ice cartons that you like pour water in and make your own ice, because after a while. Those things are like just disgusting and I just don't like it. So what I do is I always pour like a fruity drink in a cup and leave this in the freezer and it gets really chilled. So now it makes, I make my own ice with the, the fruit juice and it's like a pineapple mango situation and I pour it with my wine and it just smells perfect. It's perfect. You're welcome for that tip. That one was a free one. All right. Hi, hello. I see people saying hi, hello. All right, so let's get started on some of these questions. Um, oh, and let me make sure that before I even start, I wanted to give a big, giant shout out to today's sponsor, which is my Patreons. I have a Patreon, and if you don't know what that is, it's basically a platform that artists can go on and be supported by people who actually like the art that we do. So if you like what I do, you like the free tutorials I give on my YouTube channel, you like that I come on here every Thursday, and help you guys out and give some free information that you don't have to pay for, then help a sister out, please. Help a sister out. I have a Patreon. You guys can check that out. I will post that link after this, or you can like go to my YouTube channel and watch any one of my videos. The link is in the description, one of those descriptions. And basically, it's a monthly thing. You just pay monthly, however much you want to pay, and you receive some rewards depending on what tier you decide to pay on. So I'll let you guys check that out, but you also receive exclusive tutorials every month. Um, they're not the tutorials I put out there, the more structure, bigger, the better, wedding, pricing information, you get so much more from me at my Patreon, so check that out. What else? Let me cross off, because I have to remind myself the things I wanted to say. All right, also, if you're not following me on my YouTube so you can watch this replay, do so after this segment today. You can go in the description, in my bio, you guys like the like hand gestures I'm doing today? 
You go in the description in my bio on my Instagram, and you can get access to my YouTube channel from there. So yeah, let's just jump right into it. All right, let's see. So some of the questions that I've had were, I think I'm doing a lot of this because I don't have like, I'm not frosting anything. Like I'm not really doing anything. So I feel like I have to do something with my hand. Let's do a mic check. Can y'all hear me? Y'all can hear me, right? <laughs> I'm literally watching myself here and I look so ridiculous. <laughs> Going like this. <sighs> All right. So some of the questions that I have, so let's let's not go in order. Pick one, Jelena, pick one, pick one, pick one, pick one, this one. Okay. So some of the questions that I have, I have Marcella J from YouTube. Uh, I just took questions from anybody that uh, has asked me through the week on my YouTube channel or my Instagram or has DM me any of their questions. So, Marcella J, she was watching my princess uh, topper tutorial that I have on my YouTube channel. It's really cute. I made like this princess castle and then as a separate tutorial, I made like this little princess cake topper. So she was watching that one and she said, beautiful work, appreciate you. Thank you, Marcella. Where can I find the face tool? Okay, so I use the tool to sculpt the face. Something really simple to like push in the eyes, make the nose. It is, it's called the Dresden tool. This is actually a Wilton one. You can find it in their tools at uh, with Michael's Arts and Crafts or Hobby Lobby if they sell the Wilton. I don't think they sell the Wilton at Hobby Lobby. Michael's Arts and Crafts. But you can also get this online and it doesn't have to be Wilton. Hashtag not sponsored. It doesn't have to be Wilton. It can be any Dresden tool that you find of any product name. So that's what I have. It has comes with two sides. It comes with a thinner point and it comes with a wider point that's a little more flat. This is one of my favorite tools and I use it pretty much for everything. Everything. You can sculpt with it. You can make texture with it. Everything and anything. So yeah. Let's see what else. Let me cross these out. Where did I put that pin at? Are you guys sculptors? Does anybody in here sculpt any cake or have Dresden tools? Make sure you don't repeat the question over and over again. All right. What else? Next question. Next question. Pick a question. Oh, before I pick a question, let me drink my wine. You guys know what it's like. You put the kids to bed. Mm, the iced pineapple mango thing is starting to melt, so it's making the my uh bottle of wine hashtag not sponsored let me turn that around it's making my it's just making fruitiness deliciousness in my drink all right so yeah you know what it's like put your kids to bed you've been up all day you've been doing stuff all day you just want to get a, a, a glass of wine and, and chill out that's all i want to do after this guess what i'm doing i'm going to bed i'm going to bed i'm gonna finish my wine i'm gonna watch youtube some YouTube channels, some tutorials, some DIY stuff, and yeah, and call it a day. Because today has been a day. I am tired. All right. Okay, so beautiful Chrissy. Hi, beautiful Chrissy from Instagram. She's asked, what is the best food coloring for chocolate and fondant, and which brand do you recommend for fondant? Okay, so first things first, the brand that I can recommend for fondant, if you aren't if you're a beginner, I would say Wilton. And if you are advanced, I would still say Wilton. Wilton is affordable, one. It's convenient, two. And they've changed the recipe where it's 10 times more pliable. I have been using Wilton for 13 years. I stand by that product. I stood by it then and I stand by it now. I know a lot of people don't like it because you may um, receive elephant skin or something like that. Well, just know your environment damages food, no matter what kind of food. It could be bread, you know. Um, your environment can damage that. So if your house is way too cold, then your fondant is going to dry up and get hard much more faster, okay? If you can leave your temperature around 73 when you're working with fondant, the better. I actually like my house really cold because I know how long it's going to take me to create a piece with fondant and how long it's going to take for it to dry. When I'm using fondant, if it's not covering a cake, it's creating some type of topper of some sort, and I need this topper to dry quickly. And I have a little tip for that one too. So Wilton has always been my go-to. I've never had a problem with it. Um, I've had a problem with other brands, 
The other one that I recently started using was Renshaw's Fondant. I actually really like using theirs. It, to me, the texture and the way that you work with it is like modeling chocolate, which is what I use very often. So I'm really loving their fondant right now. But one that I would recommend for always is Wilson. Me. Just making sure I'm not missing anything. Oh, I see people waving. Hi. Hello. But should I answer questions talking like this? I feel like I should answer the questions in my English accent. And then it most likely would go to an Australian accent because, you know, I know I can, I just team too much sometimes. I see people saying hello, 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 hello. I know it's a delay. I'm giving like a delay. Hello. Hello. How are you? All right. So, uh, oh, okay. And then the, first half of the question was, what is the best food coloring for chocolate and for fondant? All right, so for fondant, I use Americola and I use Wilton. Those are the two that I use to mix my colors. Now, are they the best? Yeah, yeah, they're okay. And I use the food gel version of them. I don't use powdered uh, versions, which I'm gonna start trying out. But they've never really steered me wrong. It does take a long time. First of all, just making anything the color you wanna make it take forever. Unless you're making like baby pink and baby blue. Yeah, if you want like a rich color, it takes some time. So, but just try Wilton. Wilton is a pretty good brand. They're, I mean, nothing's wrong with them. Americolor, they're fine. The only difference with Americolor is I found like their mauve color. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what mauve is. Mauve is just this amazing color that has come upon us in the last three years in the cake community that people have fallen in love with. It kind of looks like a little bit of a rose gold. And what I, what I noticed is if I have it for maybe a month, because I don't know how long it's been on the shelf, right? But if I have it for like a month or something like that, and I go to use it, for some reason, the color has warped into this forest green color. I don't know why. And then it'll have like speckles in it. I'm not too sure what that's about. It's actually happened to me several times with Americolor's mauve color. Um, but that was the only color that has given me issues as far as that it's like changes colors on me when it sits in storage. So for chocolate, you want to use Seth Chef Masters. It's simple, it's easy to locate. You can purchase it on Amazon. Um, I That's the one I use when I would color chocolate, um, but I don't color chocolate that often. Like I barely use chocolate and have to color it. But use Chef Masters, and if you don't want that product, then I would say use any food coloring that is oil-based. Okay, I repeat, on chocolate, if you want to color it, use any food coloring that is oil-based. Because if you start using a water-based food coloring on chocolate, your chocolate is going to seize up. Because chocolate's base is oil also. That's why when people heat it up, they pour like a little capful of oil in it to help it uh, get a little more smoother and softer and melt even better. Don't use a watered-down food gel coloring or food coloring because it's just going to seize it up like immediately. It'll start having the texture of like peanut butter and getting thicker and thicker. You don't want that. Oh, you guys are sending me some hearts. I appreciate it. Uh, someone asked a question. If I miss your questions, I apologize. But someone asked a question. Let me go down. I thought I saw something. What do you use for your black? Okay, so if I want to make black um, fondant, I use, it's right here. I use Super Black from Americolor. It's a food gel color. I get this giant thing right here to make black fondant with. Um, I never buy pre-colored fondant because I make tutorials way too often. I don't take cake orders. I haven't taken cake orders in the last two years because all I do is teach cake. Um, but I use fondant way too often and I can't afford to have colored fondant just sitting around. You know what I mean? So I like to get white fondant and then I buy like big things like this so I can color my black. With buttercream, I still use this, but I got a little trick on how I color my buttercream. Oh, who asked that question too? Because I want to make sure I put that out there. Saray and sugar. Saray and sugar. Saray, sorry, sorry and sugar. Hopefully I didn't butch that too much. Um, for buttercream, what I do is Buttercream, black buttercream is a little bit of a process. Black buttercream, a true red buttercream. If you if you want to get true colors, and basically what I mean, ooh, and there's a brand out there called True Colors. You guys should check them out. 
Um, but and I think they're powdered beige. But when I say true colors, I mean you want an actual red. You don't want it to look like a soft dark pink. You know, you want it to look actually red, bright. Um, or a black, not charcoal or, or light gray. You want it to be a true black. So my trick is for black buttercream, I make my buttercream white and then I add cocoa powder in it, okay? Or you can add uh, melted chocolate if you want it to be a, a strong chocolate flavor and get it to be brown. If you don't want it to be those flavors, then I have another trick for you. But if you don't want it to be chocolate, you can just add a different food powder uh, taste. So like powdered strawberry uh, flavoring, powdered orange flavoring. Um, you know, put 10 times more vanilla extract in it. The reason is, is because you're going to have to put a schnitzel wad of black food coloring to get the color. And it helps if you start with a brown base. So even if you're making just regular vanilla, I would go white buttercream and then I would make it a brown and then I would add my black and every so often I would sit it in the freezer or the fridge either one in the freezer for like a couple of minutes in the fridge for even longer because something about the cold temperature like coagulates the buttercream and it gets it deeper and richer and then I take it out I hand mix it in and then I add the black to a mixing bowl and I have my electric mixer mix it even longer now that, the day that I make it, the most I'll ever get from that color is it'll look like a charcoal color. It'll look really dark and charcoal-y. The next day, after storing it, it becomes deep and dark and rich and black. So that's my little trick. So the refrigerator is your trick. And making it brown first, okay? The chocolate I add in it, it takes away from the taste of adding all that food gel coloring so you don't taste the chemical of the coloring. You're welcome. Let's see, what else? Hello, just me 0313. I see you. So hello, hello. Hello, Voluptuous Desserts. <laughs> Desserts. Hello, Volupt oh, Voluptuous. Did you mean Voluptuous? You just spelled it differently. Oh, that's cute and unique. You're welcome. Uh, sorry and sugar. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, so what's next? Let's see. I only have 10 questions, but I feel like the answers will be really long. You know what I mean? All right, so all right, let's see. So from YouTube, Gladys Quark Lewis from YouTube. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel and thank you for asking questions. She asked, "Hi, hello. Still enjoying your video. Thanks for sharing to the public since your last video." Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, the cans have changed at Walmart, so can you please clear it up? Oh, okay. So what she was watching, she was watching some video about the buttercream, I think, or me making buttercream, and I referenced how I make my buttercream. So I add shortening. My buttercream I use, I make, um, my buttercream that I make is an American Crested Buttercream. American Crested Buttercream is a buttercream that stiffens. Um, it's basically like what you would get at Sam's Club in Publix, what they put on their cakes. Um, it stiffens and it lasts longer because the base of it is fat. So I use shortening, and the shortening I used to use was from Walmart. And I had a fried chicken on the front of it. Um, and so that's the one in my tutorial that I was saying, go get the one with the fried chicken. But in the summer of last year, they changed their canned product. First, it looked like they were going to stop selling it. But all they did was just change the cover of it. I don't know why. I don't know. You know, they're branding their whole situation over there at Walmart. So I bought, like, a ton of them. So let me show you which one you should be using. Let me grab that for you. So the one you want to use is this one, the All Vegetable Shortening. That's the one I use right here, okay? It says on it, great for baking and frying and stuff like that. So this is the but this is the shortening I use to make all of my buttercream. This is just the base. It's this with confection sugar, uh, aka powdered sugar, for all of you that don't know what confection is. Um, it's powdered sugar and this. Then you can add if you want. You can add real butter to it. Um, you can add fake butter to it. Make it whatever buttercream you want to make it. My cakes, I don't make from scratch because that just takes too much time. But, because I need something quick. But my buttercream, I definitely make from scratch because I feel, for two reasons. One, I feel my buttercream is much more luxurious. Lux 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 it's good. I'm not even trying to say the word right now. 
It's good, and the flavor is really nice and velvety and texture on my tongue. I love it. Two, it's much more profitable. Going for me to the store to buy a giant tub of buttercream that the taste, one, isn't very good for me, and two, it costs too much for me to use it, um, it I, I feel like I'm not going to profit enough from it. I used to buy those Wilton tubs of buttercream at Michael's, and those were like 16 I think right now they're like $16.99. At one point, they got to $18.99. But I was using those, and those tubs are very small. It's about this size. And I can only cover maybe a three-tiered six-inch, you know, and that's nothing because my cakes are really high and fall. So making my buttercream, I cut that half in thirds. Like, so now the cost of my buttercream for one batch, and I get it, it's a big batch when I use it. Um, one batch, it costs less than $7. And that covers, like, an entire four-layer eight-inch with buttercream to spare. So I'm actually really happy with that. Hopefully... I answered that question good. But yes, this is the one here that I use. It's perfect, it's cheap, it's inexpensive. You know, you can't go wrong with inexpensive. Don't think you have to purchase all the most expensive things out there to satisfy your cake decorating or whatever sweet needs. You don't really need to do that because when you spend a lot of money that, one, you don't have, and then you're just spending more money than you don't have. It makes no sense. Try to keep as much money in your pocket at the end of the day. You know what I mean? You want to keep as much money in your pocket at the end of the day um, because that means that you're gaining some sort of profit and you're taking care of uh, your needs. You know what I mean? You want to take care of your needs. Oh, look what I did. I made a word. Okay. I should have probably put this together before I went on live because then I wouldn't be struggling looking for the letter F and found it. Word of the day. Look, I'm such a school teacher. Profit is the word of the day. Profit, okay? You, what profit is. What that means, in the most lamest terms that I can describe it, that means that if this costs $2 to make, but I sell it to you for $4, okay? My profit was $2, was 50% up, all right? So you have to want to try to make a profit as much as you can, and then within that profit, you want to take some money home so you can stop working for free. Which brings me to my next question, which was, oh, before I even go on any further, all right, because I know I get new people coming in here all the time, and you guys go, what's going on? What's happening? Um, and sometimes I'm doing some crazy stuff, and today, not so crazy, which is good. Make sure you guys hit that little airplane down at the bottom of your screen over there so you can send this and share this with all of your followers so that way we can share the wealth of knowledge because nothing's better than watching someone else grow, right? And gain and move forward in life. Each one teach one. Now, I mean, that's what I'm all about. When you know better, you do better. So help another sister out, help another brother out so they can also get this wealth of knowledge so they know they can also go on Instagram and my YouTube channel and get whatever information that would help them out. So that brings me to the next question, which is, which I wrote it down. I want to make sure I find her name. Here it is. It is Ellis underscore delicious LLC here on Instagram. She actually put in the comments just the word pricing when she wanted uh, the question answered for her. So I guess she wanted me to give her a little bit of tips on pricing, which hopefully the profit one gave her a little tip. Now, I can't give away too much because I teach a class on this. I teach a very good class on this. It's a, um, the online class I used to teach was a three-day course. I no longer teach that class online because three days, it's ex it exhausts me. Um, it was uh, three hours each day, and it was very exhausting. Um, but I taught this class to over 200 people and the people who even have brick and mortars now, the people who purchase their brick and mortars before they even learn their pricing, um, if that's a goal of yours, sometimes it's not a goal of ours. Brick and mortar, uh, if you don't know what that means, it just means a storefront. So I teach this class in person now. It was a double class. First it started out being just a pricing class, then it ended up being a, um, 
I was teaching the legal side of it on how to get your business off the ground from home. So now I've combined those two classes together and I teach a pricing with confidence class in person. I'm teaching it in New York, in Miami, and here in Georgia. If you missed the first class, it was in January. Um, but don't miss the second one. You don't wanna miss the second one. If you aren't in, living in any of those states that I just mentioned, Florida, Miami, uh, here in Georgia, or in New York, then fly to them, okay? It is a nine hour course. We do feed you lunch. And uh, it gets real in that class. So you might wanna check that out. You can check that out on my website, which is www.shopmorecakeym.com. If you wanna know about, more about pricing, uh, there's a payment plan, all of that. I, I couldn't give you any, uh, too much detail on the information I teach in the class because it's not fair for the people who paid for it, who have paid for it, who has paid for it now, and then who's going to pay for it later for me to give that information away for free. But what I can tell you is you wanna make sure your pricing is right because at the end of the day, that's great that you have customers, right? It's always amazing when we get a customer because we're taking every order because we're all like, oh, I wanna take this order and I'm gonna take this order just so I can have orders because I feel like I'm putting my name out there. That's fine, that's how we all start. No one's knocking that. But at the end of the day, when you sell your cakes for $35 to $50, you're undercutting everybody else in the industry, like by a lot. And then two, you're not, your take home is nothing. You're not taking any money home in your pocket at the end of the day, okay? You may have spent only $30 on this product and sold it for 50. So that means you made 20 bucks. No, that's not what that means. That means that $20 still has to pay some bills around here. Okay? That's what that means. So I take you step by step in the class and we go over individual pricing one by one and I give you all the charts, I give you the equation, I give you everything that you need um, to kind of get yourself off the ground as far as becoming legal, getting all the licenses and everything like that. I give you everything. So you definitely want to check out that class. I don't know how many times I got to plug it. Take my pricing with confidence class. You'll love it. I promise you. So thanks for asking the question now. All right. So what's next? Did I miss anything? Did I miss any questions? Is there alcohol in there? In, in this? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, there is. Yeah. I'm just pretty happy about it because... I don't get to drink alcohol very often. So I feel like this is an event. It's an extravaganza. All right. Uh, if you want to know what I'm drinking, I'm drinking pink Moscato because, you know, I'm fancy. I'm drinking pink Moscato. It's from a uh, brand Barefoot. All right. So Chef Anika underscore Lewis here on Instagram. Hi. She says how to get the right amount of icing on the sides. Oh, wait, no. She asked me several questions. The first question she said, how to keep my cake from sliding when I'm icing it? Good question. All right, so I'm gonna, oh look, yeah, I appreciate the hearts. Okay, so I have this turntable. I know some of you may have Wilton, which is fine. Uh, I have like 10 Wilton turntables. Um, you know, I'm a Wilton like, I'm a Wilton girl. I've been using them for years. And I'm one of those people that if I didn't have, a, when I started out and I didn't have a circle cutter, I cut things with knives and cups. I didn't have anything when I started making cakes and cupcakes. I didn't even know what I was doing. And so I just used what was around my house because I didn't have the money to go purchase stuff. And then when I started having money, I would buy everything and anything. And now I need to get rid of it because I don't use all those everything and anything. Um, but yeah, I have like 10 Wilton turntables and that's specifically for class. And I know Wilton turntables have that issue where it's like you turn it, let me loosen this up. You turn it and it'll go. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if their new ones do that. I know their old ones that had that blue thing on the bottom did that a lot. And I've heard a lot of people say that. But I have this turntable. It's from Sugarworks. Okay. Um, if you're interested in purchasing any of their products, they've given me a 10% off coupon code. Just use more cake and the number 10, more cake, number 10, and you'll get 10% off all of your items on their website. If you just go to Sugarworks here on Instagram, or you can go to sugarworks.com, I think, sugarworks.com, and you can check them out also in their store and everything that they sell. But with theirs, they've 
provide you with this mat, right? You can get this like at the dollar store. All it is is like a door liner. Or you can actually go to Ruth Ricky. I'm actually not sure. I got these like four years ago. Um, I'm not sure if she still sells these or not, but maybe check her out. Ruth Ricky, um, she sold these little placemats here so you can put it down and when you put your cake on it, your cake won't slide everywhere, right? Because the way that I frost my cakes is I'll have a baseboard, and it's not the final baseboard, it's just a baseboard that can get sloppy. So I have a baseboard and then I'll tape the cake board onto the baseboard, right? I'll use like a piece of tape onto the baseboard and then I have my cake, okay? So that way when I'm scraping my cake or frosting it, all the buttercream lands here and then I can just scrape it off. And then when I'm ready to put this on their final board, I can like take it off the tape and put it somewhere else. But this helps so nothing slides back and forth, okay? The, my thing's greasy right now, so that's why it's sliding. But it helps not to have anything slide back and forth when you have one of these. It's just a silicone mat. Or you can use the, um, like the drawer liners. The Sugarworks, they provide this with their turntable, which I thought was awesome. But it helps, see? Nothing, you're good. So that's one way to keep your cake from moving around. Also, a lot of patience. People get very aggravated about like trying to create something and they just don't want to do it anymore because it's not turning out the way they want it to. Now, my thing is, is if you don't have patience, this ain't the business for you, okay? You are not going to have instant results in this business. It takes time. Even when I bake from not scratch, it takes time for my results to happen. So just have some patience. Her second question was, um... And when I say patience, I mean like if you're frosting, you don't have to frost fast. I frost really fast. You don't have to. Take your time. Take your time. You need to set a schedule, right? Have a one-day baking day that you bake all your cakes, and the next day you could frost them all, all right? So that way you're not trying to do everything in one night or the night before the cake is there, which we all have been there. Let's see. Oh, I missed some stuff. Well, I'm drinking with you. Great. Cheers. Cheers to you. Thank you. If you're drinking with us, thanks. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right. Um, her other question was how to get the right amount of icing on the side. Now, this lovely product that I also have. I know I'm product like throwing products out there to you guys. Now, these products are just what works for me. They don't have to be what works for you. But a product that I use is from... Cake safe, okay? They sell these acrylic um, shapes, so round, square. So I have a bunch of different ones here in the drawer. So I use Cake Safe, and what that does is, and they'll cut it to whatever size that you choose on their website. So this is a six and a half, and I don't know if you guys can, you probably can't, um, but there's a line that goes all the way around it, right? So this is a six and a half. So I have, I don't know what that measurement is, but half of my finger. There's a line, a border that goes around there, right? Because my cake is going to be six inches, and whatever amount is left over is the amount of buttercream that will fill in. So you put one at the bottom, you put one at the top, and then you just fill in that entire gap that um, has no buttercream there or no cake, and it'll have an even amount of buttercream on the sides. So that's how I use that. Yeah. But, I mean, if you're just trying to do it without these, which I have done, because you don't always have to purchase a product. Sometimes I don't use these, and I just do it by hand because muscle memory, after a while, you kind of get the hang of it. Um, yeah, I, you can just do it by hand, and you just kind of have to keep practicing, you know, um, when you start noticing. I don't count or weigh the amount of buttercream that goes on my cake. I just guesstimate. I never really truly measure anything when I bake, ever, unless it's like, a new recipe that I've come up with to like box up a cake or something to doctor up a cake but everything I just do from pure memory but I would say just continue to practice and that way you'll be like okay that's enough buttercream and maybe rule of thumb is which I kind of hate that saying but maybe rule of thumb is you take a um, a dowel and stick it in after you put buttercream in and I would say maybe two fingers of amount of buttercream or a finger and a half you know what I mean for measurement purposes a finger and a half for the amount of buttercream the thickness 
Maybe check that out. Maybe that'll help. Hopefully. Okay. What's next? Next, are you guys enjoying the information I'm giving you guys? How do you guys feel? I. It's always weird for me just to like talk to a camera and no one's talking back. So give me some feedback. What do you guys think? Have I helped you out in any way? Are these questions pertinent to your life? Do you have a question you'd like to ask me? Let me know. Let me know what's going on. Because I want this to be, when we do this, it won't be every month that I answer your questions. But when I do do it, I'd love for it to be an open dialogue for you guys. If you guys have any feedback or any information that you guys wanted to provide, don't be afraid to provide it because it's all free love here. I don't mind it. I'm telling you, do the ice cube thing with the mango pineapple, any fruit flavor. Shit, do apple juice if you have to. Put it in, put it in a cup, put it in the freezer. Let that stuff freeze. It is so delicious. About the buttercream. Oh, I've helped about the buttercream. Oh, perfect. Thank you. I'm glad I was able to help you. All right, what's next? Um, okay, so on Instagram, Kayla underscore Faith underscore Gidding. Kayla. Faith Gidding. Maybe that's her name. Okay. Hey, girl. What's up? Uh, thanks for asking questions. She says, how to find customers here in Atlanta? So I'm going to answer this question in a broad spectrum, just not here in Atlanta for Atlanta, um, because I've lived in several places in my life, and I ran my business in three different states. Because um, my business can be ran in different states for the simple fact that everything for me is social media, Instagram, websites, online, and I can do in person, but it's not pertinent for me to live in that state. So we have two different businesses. You guys are in the business where your customer is the person who orders cakes, cupcakes, sweet treats of all different kinds. So my thing is, is you guys need to start sitting down and thinking who you want your customer to be. That's one, first and foremost, okay? First and foremost. And this is some information you that I, I provide in the pricing class. So here's a little free, freebie for you, okay? You want to think of the customer you want, which also helps to think about what you want to create. So if you want to create cookies, awesome. What kind of cookies do you want to make? Mm, I want to make cookies of all different sizes with the the whole kitchen sink on top of it, and decorating, and really pretty, and this is cute. Okay, well, who do you want to make those for? People celebrating parties and events and, you know, moments of life, whatever. Okay, great. All right, so those are your customers. You want customers who love cookies, who want the detail and the excitement of a cookie, and who are throwing any special event, birthdays, weddings, all of those. So you need to find those customers. All right. So if you're looking to put your cookies on a sweet table for a birthday party for children, who is your customer? The mother. Okay. And in some cases, the father. Okay. Dads aren't really very detailed. You have to get like the right dad to be very detailed. So I'm just going to say mother. All right. Because the majority of it is normally them. And you want to gear things towards them. So you want to find out where they are. Where are moms at? Parks, right? Taking their kids to basketball practice, right? Am I right or am I right? Uh, they're in um, daycares. When you drop off a day, when you drop off your kid, and then you gotta come pick up your kid, mom and dad are coming in and out of those places. Find your local daycare. This is how you find your customer. In order to find your customer, you have to first realize who you are and what you are doing. You don't just go out there and go, hey, I'm the cake lady, because we're all cake ladies, okay? I'm pretty sure everybody here has said, uh, has gotten the, hey, cake lady, hey, cookie lady, hey, cupcake lady. We're some sort of lady, right? Uh, hey, you're the cake girl. I get that all the time, all the time. So you have to find who you are, okay? Don't allow a customer to tell you who you are. Hey, can you make these cookies? And you don't make cookies, but you said yes. Okay, child, maybe that's what you want to do. Go ahead and practice on it if you want to, okay? But my suggestion is figure out what you want to make. That doesn't mean not to take orders. That means really open your mind to the orders that you're taking in and the ones you're really enjoying taking, okay? And the ones that are profitable. Profitable, work. That is tonight's word, profit, and then a bowl, okay?
okay, you want to make sure you are being, you're making profit. So that is one way to find your customers. What I used to do is I used to take my cards out to the park, to the park down the street from my parents' house where kids were playing football and stuff like that, you know, the flag football or whatever was going on or soccer, whatever season it was when the parents were out there and I would give my cards to, to the parents. So I got a lot of birthday cake orders like that, okay? And then you also get a lot by word of mouth. This question kind of goes hand in hand with, where is it? Oh, um, this girl asked the last minute question on Instagram uh, a few minutes before I came on and it's her name is Sugarbite NYC. She says how to successfully have a cake sale and then what are the best options for one? Okay, same thing. You want to have a cake sale you got to make sure that what you're making is going to make you profit first, okay? And it's trial and error. You're never going to get it right the, the first time around. Sometimes you screw it up, right? Sometimes you hit the you hit the, the nail on the head and you're going, bam, I've made it. I got it. So what you want to do is if you want to have a cake sale to find some customers out there, a lot of places that have cake sales, like people go to farmer's markets and things like that, that's always nice to do. Um, that didn't work for me. My product wasn't about, about you know, grandma's cookie recipe. My, my product was about this giant elegant cake that I want at your wedding. And I need you to pay me $5,000 for it. That was what my, uh, my vision for my cakes were. Um, I made the mistake, and I've done a lot of farm, I did maybe one, two, three, four, I did maybe five farmer's markets, and then I did like 10 different type of events where I came and sold my cupcakes. None of them worked. None of them. One, because my attitude, I was like, this ain't, this is not what I'm trying to do. And I don't know why I kept doing it. Because I just thought, maybe I'll do it. Don't do it as many times as I did if it's not working after the first five times. Or three times. Right? Um, your product has to speak to those customers. When customers walk by your table, they want to be able to see, like, oh, can I eat this? Some people thought my stuff was so, because it was so cute and perfect and had a topper on it. It was everything and anything. They're like, oh, I thought this was like little cupcake soaps. And I'm like, no, man, you can eat this, bro. Like, <laughs> that's what this is. So it was hard for me to sell my product because I was all about the artwork and not about like, oh, here, try my grandma's cookie recipe. So you want to make sure, one, it's appealing, and immediately the customer knows what it is. They get it right away, right? If it's a cookie, God damn it better look like a cookie. If it's cupcakes, damn it better look like a cupcake, right? So you want to make sure you have those things on your table um, not too cluttered, uh, not everywhere. And then when your customers come to the table at these farmer's markets or baker sale or wherever you are, that's when you have to open your mouth. Okay? I have met so many of you who don't speak. You're all so timid and shy all of a sudden. What the hell? What are you so shy about? What are you afraid of? No one else is going to speak on your behalf. No one else cares about your business like you care about your business. No one else is going to go, you got to buy these cupcakes, dog, it's the best cupcakes ever. Why? Because I made them. No, I didn't make them, she made them, and he's doing too, too much talking. You have to do the talking. If you don't speak on your product, then how can I trust that your product is good enough? If you, your owner, the person who makes it, can't tell me that it's good enough. So don't be afraid to speak. I am that girl. Listen, some of y'all know me, some of y'all don't. Hi, I'm Julianne. <laughs> I am that girl to be like, hey. How you doing? You like this cupcake? Would you like to try this cupcake? Yep, yeah, that is my that is who I am. Because I realized that my timid little sister wasn't going to speak up for me, and my daddy ain't raised no fool. Okay? You have to learn to speak to people. That's how you kind of figure out who you want your customer to be. I used to walk into Michael's just to stand in the cake aisle to hear people come in the cake aisle and go, Oh, I want to try making a cake. That's what I used to do. I, I had a girl once come in there with her friend who said that she was trying to make her little brother a birthday cake because they saw online uh, they saw on the on TV that Buddy Velasco the cake boss guy they saw him making a cake and they figured it can't be that hard so I said well if you guys have any trouble good luck one two if you have any trouble here's my business card I make cakes for a living I can make your cake last minute no problem okay. You have to speak on your business. That is one how you find your customer. Okay? How you start gaining business. Word of mouth. Now, you're the, the biggest people in the community that's going to give you 
The best advertisements are not your friends. Okay? It's going to be a complete stranger you made a cake for. Alright? Your friends feel like, they, I'm your friend. Why I got to now be your advertiser? Child, whatever. It is what it is. It's going to be someone you made a cake for that is now going to tell and rave about you to somebody else, to some other mom. Oh, I had Jolena make this cake and it was so beautiful and tastes so delicious. You should, here's her card, here's her information. You should reach out to her. You know what I mean? So that's, you could find your customers that way. Um, to answer her second half of her question, what are the best options for a cake sale? Again, go to farmer's markets if she's talking about location. Try farmer's markets for, first. Try school events. Um, at schools, if you have kids, um, and they have events on the weekends, they have football games, go to the concession stands, ask them if they would sell your product. Of course, you have to talk to the school first before that even happens. See if they'll sell your product. Um, again, in that situation, when it comes to school, you have to have a legalized kitchen. Take my pricing class uh, because we go over that information. But um, you also can find uh, well, churches. Have a bake sale at your church, in your community centers. Uh, you can do all of those things, um, special events. Valentine's coming up. Uh, Christmas time's coming up. When when certain events are coming up, you want to do that um, and push push that out there because people are looking for stuff like that. As far as items, excuse me, I'm like spitting all over the place. As far as items, again, make sure they are small, compact, nothing giant. You want to sell cake, sell cake slices. Okay, you want to sell cupcakes, make it one size. Don't go, well, here's a, a regular size, a smaller size, and then you get your itty-bitty mini size. No, choose a size and let that be the only size. Okay, you want to give samples, let that be a cupcake cut up into several pieces. All right, so just some of that information and hopefully that helped in some cases. Who's laughing at me? I'm sorry, I'm looking at you guys' comments. Okay. What else? Oh, okay. So before I continue, make sure you guys are following me on Instagram. I got to make sure I hit these points because if I don't, then I'm going to forget. Make sure you guys are following me on Instagram and then also make sure you go to my website after this episode, www.morecakeym.com. Or if you want to shop any of my classes or my tutorials, you can go to www.shopmorecakeym.com. Um, either website will take you to my main website. You can check out my HBIC tour and what it's all about. It's all about empowering, giving confidence to the next woman, knowing that you too are a head bitch in charge. Uh, make sure you are sharing this with all your friends and family. It, this episode will be available for all of till tomorrow morning until I delete it and then remember it's going on my YouTube channel, which is the link in my bio. What's the next question? Let's see. Is it better to ganache the cakes before applying fondant or is buttercream enough? And this is from Instagram, uh, Instagrammer Pink Piggy Sweets. Hi, how you doing? Pink Piggy Sweets wants to know, is it better to ganache your cakes before applying fondant? Now that's totally up to you. Several reasons. One for taste. That's pretty important. Um, you don't want to ganache something. Ganache is chocolate. You don't want to add chocolate to something that doesn't taste great with chocolate on it. You know what I mean? Um, so you want to think about that one. And also remember, you actually can flavor your ganache. So if it's going to be like an orange creamsicle cake, um, you know, hashtag check out my Dr. Up Box Mix Cake tutorial on my YouTube channel for the orange creamsicle cake and the watermelon cake and the coconut cake that I did. But you can add that flavor to the chocolate. So that way it kind of soothes all together. But one for flavor. Um, so yeah, you can totally do that. But you don't have to add ganache. You can just do fondant. I mean, you could just do buttercream. Either one is fine. Ganache is much more cleaner and you know, much more sharper. Um, buttercream, you can still get cleaner and sharp lines. It's just going to take a little longer because buttercream is so much more smoother than what ganache is when it stiffens. Hopefully I answered that question. That was pretty easy. Answer that one. Look, we are swinging by these questions. Great. I'm, I'm hot, guys. It's the wine, which I barely made a dent. And I feel like I'm not making a dent. And then there's these lights, like... 
Is my forehead shiny? I feel like it's shiny. Yes, just booked for your New Jersey wedding cake class. Can't wait. Awesome! Yay! Yes! I can't wait to meet you. Can't wait to meet you. We are going to have such an amazing time in that class. I'm so excited for that class. Are you excited? That cake is going to be freaking huge. We're going to have a great time. Great, great time. All right. Um, question from an Instagrammer, Junie. I think it's Junie. Junie G1226. It's J U N Y G1226. She says, How do you make your cake moist? Mm. Let me tell you. You first want to massage it in the right place. No, I'm kidding. All right. So, I mean, if you're into that kind of thing, uh, you can make a, um, a syrup of some sort and then you can like drizzle it in your cake. That's one way to make your cake moist and keep it moist. I don't like to do that because I don't make my cakes come from a cake box. And those cakes are already moist. Any cake that comes from a cake box will already automatically be moist. Thank you, Betty Crocker. We appreciate you. Um, so don't like, you don't really have to do that. Now, if your cake is super thick, excuse me, if your cake is super thick, sometimes it can get dried out. So making a syrup isn't a bad idea. I just don't like doing it because I scope my cakes and I do so much with them that if the cake is too moist, it'll just fall apart on you. But you can make a syrup of some sort. Um, usually, that basically what that means is you can take water and sugar, like a sugar syrup. Water and sugar and add some flavor in there if you want to. And put that on the stove. Heat that till the sugar has dissolved. Put it in a cup, a bottle. I know maybe you guys have seen YouTuber Yolanda Gamp. She has Sir Squeeze a lot. Um, she squeezes syrup in all of her cakes. Her cakes are pretty thick. I, I, I don't bake thick cakes like that, so I would I, and so I don't do that. Um, but one way that you want to make sure that your cakes don't dry out is you want to wrap them really good in plastic wrap and stick them in the freezer. Say if you're not frosting them until tomorrow, stick them in the freezer, child. Don't be afraid to freeze your cakes because that's what we all eat when we go to Publix and Sam's Club. We, and, and we're in line at Wendy's and we're eating frozen food, okay? Don't, it's not a big deal. You freeze your cakes, you wrap them really good. You do not want to put the cake in the refrigerator. The difference between a refrigerator and the freezer is in the fridge your cake will dry out completely. Okay, completely dry out. It'll get stiff and hard and crumble and be shit. You don't want that. You put it in the freezer and you take it out maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes beforehand, depending on how frozen it is. Let it defrost and it'll become nice, soft, and fluffy and moist all over again. So that's one way without having to add any syrup to it. But definitely check out doing a simple syrup is what it's called simple because it's super simple to make and drizzle it into your cake hopefully that helps you um hello hi i see everybody saying hi 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 oh yeah there goes the june yg1226 hello girl hopefully that helped you and answered all the questions hi santana how you doing girl all right so what's next all right we finished that one. Oh my god i don't have that much time okay so i have to hurry up let me check the camera hold on i just checked the time Okay, it's not telling me I'm ending yet, but pretty soon I will be. Okay, how many questions do I have left? I have I have two two questions left. Okay, um, from YouTuber Cake Angel, she was watching my box mix cake video, the one I just told you guys about, where I make the watermelon cake, which is so divine. If you guys missed that last segment with me two weeks ago, it was so divine. And then I made a coconut and I made a um, orange cream sickle. They were divine, amazing. Check it out, the Doctor Box Mix Cake. It's on my YouTube channel, free tutorial, free recipe. She was watching that. She said, could you please let me know what is the reason for reducing the eggs? Okay, so your box mix asks for three eggs. The box mix I use, it asks for three eggs. We put in two eggs. I'm going to give you a little sign. So, I'm breathing hard now. <sighs> I'm flustered. Okay, uh, eggs add volume to your cake. But don't call me a baker, okay? I'm just a professional. Uh, I don't like people calling me a baker. I just know all this baking information. Just from trial and error, okay? Never went to baking school. So eggs add value to your cake, all right? The more eggs you add, the more thicker your cake will be, all right? So the reason why we took out an egg was because we were adding um, other things in that box mix. So a doctor a box mix basically means you take your box mix and you add other stuff to it that doesn't call for it on the box recipe and that's now we have doctored it up. I don't know who dubbed that saying. I don't know. 
So for one of them, we did the watermelon one, and we did two eggs, and then we did a bag of Jello. Yes, it was watermelon flavored Jello. Amazing. When you add Jello to a cake, it adds even more volume. So the cake, when you cut it, when I cut into it and baked it, it was thick, uh, much more thicker. If I didn't have, if I just used three eggs, so the, taking away an egg helped with that, not making it too heavy and too hard of a cake. Uh, it wasn't thick like a pound cake. It still was soft, but you could tell that it was much more thicker than a regular box mix cake. So that's the reason we only added two eggs rather than three. Because eggs add volume to your cake. I feel like I'm going in circles answering the question. Hopefully that helps. Last question. How to find cus nope, you've done that question. Oh. And I'm done. You're welcome. You're very much welcome. And I still have my glass of wine. Alright. Word of the night, profit. I'm gonna close it out so that way. Thank you. I'll see you in Miami. Great. I hope I, I hope to meet you in Miami too. That'll be amazing. Pricing class in Miami, guys. Spread the word. Um, word of the night, profit. Make sure you guys are making a profit. Okay? If you guys need help with pricing, take my pricing class. I'll be in New York. I'll be in Miami. And here in Georgia. Georgia is the next pricing class. Don't be afraid to drive here. I drive everywhere. Don't be afraid of it. Um, also, follow me on Instagram if you're not. Share this with your friends, your family here on Instagram. It helps me out. If for anything, it helps me out. Because the more people that watch what I'm doing and comment and share, the more I know I'm doing something good and people actually like it. If you guys don't like it, then I, I feel like, oh, okay, maybe I'm not doing something that is people are understanding or wanting. You understand what I'm saying? Hopefully you are. And after this, go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to it, hit the notifications. Thanks to my Patreons. If you're not a Patreon of mine, sign up. You get uh, one to two new tutorials a month. They share from beginner to advanced. You get information that a lot of people don't get when I do my tutorials. Uh, and you get first dibs on a lot of the YouTube tutorials that I put out there also. So make sure you check that out. My meetups. I will come on, not tonight because I've had not enough wine, but I've had a little too much wine. Uh, but I will come on tomorrow and tell you guys about my meetups. But you want to sign up for my meetups. If anything, that's what you want to sign up for. I have classes that range from different prices. And they all have payment plans. But I do have pop-up classes that $25, $30, depending on what state I'm in. If anything, sign up for my pop-up classes and sign up for my meetups. Those are fun and exciting. We're going to have an amazing time. It's all about you. It's all about having a great time. It's all about getting out of your house because we do this by ourselves. So, yeah, so look for that speech tomorrow because I'm going to. But I really appreciate all of you for joining in tonight, sticking with me, helping ask questions, helping with the conversation. Uh, if you guys really enjoyed this, let me know. I will maybe make this a regular segment to answer all the questions that you guys may have and give you guys a little more of a conversation. Um, yeah, if anything, I'm Juliana from Market Gift, my badass of art, and I will see you guys on the flip side. Bye. All right, I gotta come over there and hang up, I can't stop the camera, so I'll be, thanks, appreciate that, bye.